if we'd make the stuff in America, we wouldn't be in this boat. If we would go back to making things in this country, we would not be in this boat we are in right now. And it is taking on water. I have mentioned that before. All right, folks. Well, <clears throat> the cards that we have been dealt um, are, are really not really good cards. You feel like you're sitting at a, a poker table and you you just put your chips in hoping that you're going to get that one card or two cards that are going to like, you know, win you the game. And uh, you, it, it didn't happen that way. And there, there's just a lot of certain things that are, are going mm -hmm. on. One thing we have to really realize is it's not whether we're going to have a food crisis. It's basically how large that crisis will be. You know what I'm saying? And when it's actually going to hit. Now, you did have the other day, you even had the president came out and he was even saying that there's going to be food shortages globally, but also in America. That should have been a wake up call for a lot of people out there. Now, um, what I have to tell you is you have to make sure that you are basically realizing the fact that it is so important for people to be prepped and ready, especially coming into the fall of this year into the next winter because <clears throat> we have too many bad cards in the deck. If you really understand what I'm saying, um, we have fertilizer shortages. We have to have this year in America, just America. Okay. We have to have one of the best yielding producing harvests that we've ever had. Now that's, by far a crapshoot if you want to put it that way because think about it we have We're going to, to be short on fertilizer so wh whatever farmers don't get the fertilizer their crop yield is already going to be 40 percent less we still have to figure out and deal with whatever is going to be coming weather wise with the climate and everything else you know we have droughts that have been going on we have extreme weather events flooding um we have stream cold events and you know it, the weather this year has just been crazy um even all the way down here into florida i mean we've had some of the craziest weather for a winter time than you can imagine this is the, this is the cards that we have been dealt and we really have to really think about this. You know, I mean, two weeks after Russia invaded Ukraine, the prices of the key agricultural products produced in that region have skyrocketed. Now we've shut off everything from the Russian side, but there's no farmers or anything in Ukraine that are planning right now because they're in war. So that's putting a huge strain on the European markets. You know, our president said, like I did say, that he would, that we would help. And the issue I have with that is I don't want us to shoot ourselves in the foot, you know, help out everybody else. And we're taking away from what we're going to have in our own supplies. You have to look at this as we have probably a, 90 day supply of a lot of foods in this country. Now that's being said as far as what can supply to grocery stores without anything coming in. And I'm going to get to more on that in just a second, because there are some countries that are already starting to cut off what they are allowing to come out of their countries. And this is why it's so important. These cards that we have been dealt are not good cards, folks. And I want to make sure that the people of this community, the people that are watching this video, it is so important for you to have information and to have things and videos that you can fall back on if you have questions. And this is such a great community that these people will help you out. I believe that a lot of people are starting to wake up to the fact that there is something wrong in this world. There's something wrong in this country. And people are 
searching out information on what they can do to be prepared for their family. The biggest problem is wheat. A, a, it's a pantry staple, okay? I mean, you, you have to have wheat, all right? Supplies from Russia and Ukraine, which together account for almost 30% of the global trade market. Now, I've already talked about this in videos and everything else, and I think I might have listened you know, on last week's live stream also. But they're at risk now because they're taking 30% out of the whole equation. The global wheat prices hit an all-time high um, earlier this week when all that really, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just really bad, folks. Another major problem that we have, which I've mentioned, is access to fertilizer. Yes, the, the government has tried to start beefing up and getting people, uh, companies to produce more, but it, this is a time consuming process and it's not something that can just like flip a switch and, oh, you got another hundred tons of this stuff. It doesn't work that way. These companies either have to expand their plants, build new plants or whatever they have to do to try to make sure that we're doing it all here. And it all falls back on my huge thing that I'm really big on is if we'd make the stuff in America, we wouldn't be in this boat. If we would go back to making things in this country, we would not be in this boat we are in right now. And it is taking on water. I have mentioned that before. We just don't have access to the fertilizer that we need that can be affordable for the farmers. Because like I've said in some of my other videos, if the, the farmers decide that they want to buy the fertilizer, which means they're going to charge more for their harvest, which means we're going to pay more at the stores. It's all a ripple effect. It all starts at the top and ripples down through, you know? I mean, it's just what it is. And it's essential for farmers to hit their productions this year and their target crops. I mean, it is just, that is the uh, huge, huge thing for this year, folks. It's never been more expensive for fertilizer than it is right now. And a lot of farmers are feeling the crunch. And, you know, the exports from Russia are at a halt. There's nothing coming out of Russia right now, period. In a conversation, it's done. And in my opinion, we should build our own companies here to make our own so we don't care. Right? I mean, um, I'm a big advocate on making things in this country and stop importing everything that we have to have to survive on a daily basis. Natural gas is the key ingredient to making your, your nitrogen-based fertilizers. All right, so you need that natural gas. In a lot of countries, that price has spiked, and which is putting the whole global market in restraint. The situation basically is, I mean, it's, it's ringing alarm bells all over the globe, all right? I mean, every country right now is like freaking out, folks. Uh, they, they don't know what to do. They don't know what their plan of action is going to be. Um, they're looking, you know, the, the cost of corn, soybeans, and vegetable oils have been jumping. You know, I mean, they've been just going up and up and up. Many of the countries are fearing the, the, the shortages and already turning inward, which means they're not exporting, which could ultimately leave less food for those that are really in need. There are a lot of countries that um, rely on a lot of the other bigger countries to help them out with their food crisis that they already have, like Africa. Sometimes you wish you could just fold and go on to the next round and hopefully get some new cards dealt. But unfortunately, we don't have that luxury right now. Now, I want to talk about a couple of countries here. Uh, Egypt just banned the export of wheat, flour, lentils, and beans. Amid the growing concerns over the food reserves in the Arab world's most populous state. And then you have Indonesia has also tightened export restrictions 
on palm oil. Now, a lot of you people out there may not know, but palm oil, it's in a component in most cooking oil, and it's also in cosmetics and a lot of packaged goods like um, chocolates and those type of things. You know, Indonesia is really the, the world's top producer of the palm oil. And that's where palm oil really comes from is Indonesia. The Western countries with more agricultural, um, ex, you know, access like us, maybe uh, England and those type of areas, we're going to be all hurt by this too. It's all going to affect everybody. I mean, even in the president even said it the other day, you know, and now I'm not pushing Biden. I'm not pushing anything. I'm just telling you what he said. Consumers have, you know, they have already been, <laughs> you know, we're hitting with the high prices. Let's just face it, folks. I mean, you go to the store now and you're spending an extra hundred bucks right now a week, not to mention the extra gas that it's costing you to go to those stores. And, you know, the higher the gas prices, now you're factoring in the fact that, okay, how far do I have to drive to the stores? How far, you know, is at home? How many stores do I have to go to? Because not only are you paying more in the grocery store, but you're paying more just to get to the grocery store. And, you know, the, the situation is posed to deteriorate further. I mean, it's, it's, I hate to be the bearer of bad news here, folks, but the uh, outlook on this isn't good, especially coming into fall and winter of this year. And that is going to be a, a very trying time for a lot of people in this world. The number of people on the edge of famine right now has jumped to 44 million people from 27 million in 2019. What am I really trying to get at here is why it is so important for all of you to sit back and really take a good look at what you have, what you need, what is important and what isn't, and how you can plan and put a, um, a good, solid, rural flush in your hand so that you will be prepared when the um, shit hits the fan. Uh, let's just face it, folks. A lot of people, <clears throat> I've got a lot of comments and stuff on uh, quite a few videos um, over the last couple of weeks. And there's a lot of people that are in denial. They don't think that there's anything wrong. They don't, you know, they don't see any shortages in their area. They don't, um, they don't see any of this kind of stuff. So they don't believe that anything's happening, which, you know, I mean, if you're not, if you don't have shortages in your own area, then, you know, that's, that's a great thing, but it's only a matter of time, folks. All right. With the way we're going, it's only a matter of time until something is really, really drastically going to happen. And if you are not prepared, if you're not ready, if you haven't been putting away some type of a reserve stockpile of food and supplies, you're going to be hurting. Um, there uh, are quite a few people that are the beginners. There's a lot of people in here that are experienced, have been prepping for years and years. I have both, all right? It may say survival preparedness for beginners, but that's the name of the channel, all right? We're discussing for everybody, every prepper that's out there. That's who we're basically gathering information for. And we lean off of a lot of these senior preppers that post some amazing comments and everything else on the videos which will help all you beginning preppers Important. out. These Even cards that we have been dealt, folks, they're very scary cards. We have a lot of money that's at stake here. All the money that you do have in your bank accounts, your savings accounts, your 401ks, your IRAs, and everything else. If this baby goes down and everything starts going south, you're going to start losing a lot of your money. Um, 
You know, I mean, yes, there are FDICs and, you know, you have all this kind of different things and everything else, but will you be able to access that money if something really bad does happen and the markets all take a turn? You know, a lot of people believe that, that you know, the great reset is rolling in as we are speaking slowly but surely underneath the cover of darkness now <clears throat> there have also been talking about with this whole uh charlie victor 19 thing um you know it's uh another little offspring has uh sprung <laughs> if you get what i'm saying and you know now they're talking oh well it can blow up here and i was reading an article today that the northeast will be the first one that's hit and everything else and it's like okay well how do they know that all right i like to ask questions how do they know that the northeast is going to be first hit and it's going to be the 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 worst in the northeast are they planting it there i don't know you tell me my thing is you know, you got to look at where a lot of these people are coming from. I would think Florida would be right up there just because of all the tourists that are here. We have hundreds of thousands of people that fly into the Orlando airport every day. All right. I mean, and they're from all over the world because they reopened everything back up. So they're from all over the world. So I don't know. Ten buck to Vermont compared to Orlando, Florida. Where's your money at, folks? I'll tell you where my money is. It's Orlando, Florida. But I don't know. You know, you just think that you would have more people coming into an area. But supposedly uh, these people, quote, know what they're doing. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. But we just need to make sure that we're prepared. Everybody needs to be doing whatever you can to make sure that you are prepared because the food shortage thing come the end towards the end of this year is going to be uh, really nasty. I really do believe I, but the moral of the story is folks, we have to be prepared. Your time is running out very quickly. It's going to come to the point where you're not going to be able to prepare because you're not going to be able to afford the products. And that is going to be a very hard situation if you can't put food on a table for you and your family. Now, I'm not trying to say here, I'm not trying to scare tactic anybody or anything else. I've been accused of that over the last two weeks. All right. I'm trying to bring you information and I'm trying to make sure that you are informed and I tell you what you need to be doing. I'm not trying to tell you this stuff because it's not true. I'm telling you the truth. If I tell you it's my opinion, I state it's my opinion. I want you to be aware so that you and your family will be safe. That's the whole reason I'm sitting here doing this live stream, these videos. It's why I put all the time and effort into making what I do. Is because I literally care about each and every one of you and even all the people that haven't subscribed to this channel. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this channel. Yes, it'd be nice if you subscribed, but that is your choice. All right. So once again, folks, just to recap a little bit of this video and some of the things that have taken place, the cards we're being dealt are very bad cards. The, the fact of the matter is, um, in this last four minutes of this video, the fact of the matter is, is you need to be prepping as much as you can. We have a mix of both in this channel. We have a really good group. We have a great community and I really appreciate everything that you all do for this community, for my channel, for your channel. It's ours. All right. And we're, we keep it that way. We're, we, you know, I mean, people, yes, like I was talking about, yes, they watch and they haven't subscribed and you know, they'll get there, you know, um, the more information that they receive from us on this channel and when as if they would really come in 
if you haven't subscribed, if you really go in and start watching some of the videos and you see a lot of the comments and everything else, you're going to see that people help each other out. And that's what we're all about here. Uh, we really don't get into the real deep stuff of some of these channels where it's, uh, quote, the complete end of the world. And um you know you're gonna die tomorrow that ain't gonna you're not gonna find that here um i may tell you bad news all right i may tell you bad news but i'm also gonna give you a reason and i'm gonna tell you how you can survive that bad news i'll never leave you hanging i'll never do that to you um sometimes it pays to listen to some of the older generation because they've been there done that and they've been through a lot. Um, so, you know, you can learn a lot by just opening your ears and listening to stories. Because in the end, life is really one big story. And it's up to you on how you want it to play out and what cards you want to play and how you want it to end so until next time folks i'd like to thank you all for being here i cherish all of you very much i thank you for all that you do for this channel i thank you for all the likes the shares subscribes everything but i'll catch you all on the flip side